You are listening to The Catholic Wire. Hello and welcome to The Young Woman. I am your host for today's episode, Father Carlos Cepeda, and I'm introducing today uh, who is going to be our host for this show. That's Isabel Martinez. Isabel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Father. I appreciate it. We're really excited to have you here in the crew, and you're listening, of course, to The Catholic Wire. Uh, Today we're going to be discussing basically the idea behind this show of the, The Young Woman, And I think it's going to be really cool to have Isabel hosting the show. Isabel, do you have any experience with hosting podcasts or anything like that? (laughs) None at all, no. Um, That's that's good, me neither. This is completely new to me. I have friends that host podcasts, but I have never once sat behind a microphone. Yeah. So I I was looking for hosts uh, probably a couple months ago, and I, I think I actually reached out to someone else before. Not because I I thought they were better, but just because I was like, it, it didn't cross my mind. Do you know who I reached out before? Um, my first guest would be Colleen. Yes. Uh, and Colleen uh, gently declined. And and then when I, I was, wait a minute, Colleen, Isabel is like right there. Uh, she's perfect for the job. And so... I ended up calling Isabel, and, and she was totally on board, and we're really excited about this show. So, I, uh, yeah, I'm not yeah. surprised that Colleen turned it down. But when she she told me, like, "Oh yeah, Father had asked me, but I was just too nervous to." It's like, well, yes. I I like talking, so. <laughs> so let me just give you a, a little bit of an idea, and then Isabel, you can, you can comment on that. Uh, this is a whole section. First of all, it's not just a podcast. Uh, Isabel is going to be hosting the podcast. She might be also administering the section. That's up to her, and we'll see how much time she has on her hands. But this is actually a whole section of our network of the Catholic Wire. Uh, This section is going to have, for example, videos. Uh, We're going to have videos of crafts, videos of music, of art, of um, a travel blog, reviews. Isabel, you were telling me something about making maybe in the future a show about uh, book reviews, right? Yes, yeah, that was one of the things we had discussed. Um, Myself and a couple other girls had wanted to do um, together. So, are you an avid reader? I yes, I read pretty much all the time. Um, It kind of depends on what, but yeah, I really do like reading, and I hope to be able to do the books that I read justice in Mm. like reviewing them, but. Yeah, that is something that's on the table. Come to think about it, did I ever did I ever lend you or suggested to you the never ending story? Yes, you did lend that to me. That was I think you gave it to me or let me borrow it at the beginning of twenty twenty and then we all left because of corona mm-hmm. and I gave it back to you at some point, but that was such a good book. I only got like halfway through, yes. but the half that I read was so good. That, that's why I remembered, because I, I think I must have recommended that book to like, uh, not as a religious book, of course, but I, you know, I recommended it as an entertaining book, probably to like 10 different people. And I think only one read it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's sick in my memory. It's like... Uh, I had some students in the seventh and eighth grade, and I was like, "You have to read this book," and they would take it, and then they would, I would ask them, and they'd be like, "Oh yeah, 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 sure, it's really good." And then, how much have you read? Oh, uh, like five pages, but you know, it's really good. Anyways, um, that would be awesome. I think that that section would be really interesting. I'm sure you will do justice to the books, hopefully. Um, <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> yeah, but see, here's something really interesting, really cool. Uh, just yesterday, I received videos from a girl here in Arkansas who has been making videos and and is like, I haven't even asked. I haven't even told people about the fact that we wanted to put videos in here. And I already got some and she agreed to have them on. And and she has some really cool videos about uh, like drawing and she's making like a travel blog video right now too. 
That's so, awesome. It's really cool. It's really cool. Uh, yesterday we went with some of the boys. We're making a, a travel blog again, but this one is for the young men. And we went into a cave, and we have like a really cool video of the cave. Like, it's a really cool cave, like movie-like <laughs> cave. That is so cool. I and love was, caves. Yeah, yeah. We would never bring you there though. But uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> understandable. <laughs> <laughs> You actually have to swim. You have to swim. Uh, oh yeah, I could never. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're you're going into the cave, and you go down, and then you start swimming, and it comes to a point where you have only the water covers up to your. Actually, no, the water goes uh, above you, but then you only have a room of air, probably of eight inches to the roof oh, wow. of the cave, and you have to swim probably probably twenty feet or so to get to the inside of the cave. But we'll see that in the young man, not the young woman. Just you know. <laughs> It's a good way to attract people to the other show as well. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, fair point. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so um, one of the factors is that, that it's a whole section. The other thing is, uh, what are the goals that we have? Well, I don't know, Isabel, what, you go, what goals you have. What I'm expecting of this is this. First of all, first of all is, you know, to help girls practice virtue, you know, to help them grow, build themselves up. It's a positive aspect, of, of course. The second one would be, to help them out, to protect them from all the wrong that is going on in the world right now, from all the evils that are being taught to them, you know, all the wrong, wrong information that comes in, in society today. And the third one, and we will go into this a little bit more into detail, but the third one would be uh, entertainment. Uh, and here I just want to make a real brief parenthesis. Some people might be listening to this and they might be saying, well, Father, you know, you're not supposed to be dealing with entertainment. Um, and, and there's a reason for that. I am against, uh, somewhat against entertainment or the idea of entertainment because it's really, uh, it's a way to kind of numb one's humanity. You know, you when you entertain yourself, you stop acting, you stop doing, and you become a passive member. We'll go into that in some show perhaps. But entertainment becomes a really good source of education. You know, when you're listening to music or watching movies or whatever, you're being educated. Ideas are coming into your head. And unfortunately, the evil part of society right now, the enemy, are actually using that to bring bad ideas and bad notions into women and men, men's minds. And so we need to do the opposite. We need to provide good sources of entertainment, which will help to be also a, a source of education. Those are my three goals right now with this section isabel i don't know what you what how you how do you feel about that that is that's pretty much those are also my goals i would like to add on to that like especially with the entertainment and the way to get just catholic content to other catholics this is also just something that i was drawn to when you asked me to do this because we as Catholics don't have a lot of good content being thrown at us at all. There's almost nothing. There's nothing from the secular world that is being thrown at us that is good and wholesome. And mm -hmm. so to have this, especially as a young woman, to be a part of a project like this is so, it's so inspiring to know that there are people that want this and that there are people that support this idea and that there are people that will listen, that will take the time to give our the Catholic wire a chance and to listen to what we have to say and doing it in such a way that it's easy to that we're making this so accessible to people. I think that is my main goal is to help get Catholic content so accessible to a wide range of people. Because it's not accessible nine times out of ten. People don't have the opportunity to listen to Catholic podcasts pretty much ever. And if they are Catholic, they're not true Catholics. They're the Novus Ordo, and that's not enough at all mm -hmm. in any way. So, But yeah, Father, your goals for this are pretty much the same as mine, I think. Nice. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. We, we made an arrangement before we started the show. One, one thing I would say, you know, I, it, something else popped into my mind, and this is actually a very important point. This is actually something that I'm really uh, concerned about, and that is uh, the, to, to give a way for Catholics to connect with each other. 
that is such a huge deal right now. You know, there's so many young people out there, young girls, young, young men, who maybe live out in a farm or they live in a place where there is maybe 10 Catholics, you know, like real Catholics around them. Or even, I mean, even in, in public schools. And it's like they want to meet other people, but they, they are like 500 miles away. And we really need to start something to be able to connect. And I hope, I'm hoping that this project will help with that, uh, you know, giving Catholics, young Catholics especially, an ability to connect to one another and to get to meet other people. I also hope yeah. that that works. No, for sure. Like, I know Anthony, Ali, and I went to school together in Omaha, but we have not really just, we didn't keep in contact very well. But because of this podcast, we started like messaging each other about oh, father's doing this, and have you listened to this yet? And did you, he talk to you about that? And it's just, I'm reconnecting with people that I didn't think that I'd ever really reconnect with. Like, of course, I thought of them as friends in high school and everything, And but I've reached out to other girls my age asking, hey, what would you like to hear from something like this? And I live somewhere that there are Catholics my age. There are good young Catholic kids that we all go to holy hour together on Tuesday evenings. So it's, I am fortunate enough for that, but I know so many people that aren't, and this is going to be so good for these people that don't get to have, that don't get to have people around them that have the same goal, like getting to heaven and most kids in public schools don't have, they don't have that goal. That's not their end goal Mm -hmm. for all of us. We have the same end goal and it's to do God's will and to get to heaven. And so if we're, even if we're hundreds of miles apart, we all know, okay, but I know that that's their goal and you can connect with someone over that. Yeah. Well, and you know, St. Teresa would say, that she was speaking about the 1500s and she was saying the world is so bad right now that we need to to watch each other's back and help each other's you know because it, to to be on the side of Christ right now you get so many enemies in the 1500s she was saying this in Spain too <laughs> <laughs> so in the in the 2000s here in America you know and when the world is being pretty much overrun by communism it's like we definitely need to watch each other's back and to have, I don't know, uh, to me, you know, as a priest, I'll, I'll share a little bit of a personal insight here. Sometimes you're driving, you know, several hours, and at the end of the day, you really need a human voice to talk to. And I kind of hate uh, that, you know, sometimes what I have to have recourse to is a podcast or a recording. And, um, well... Usually it's not very edifying stuff, you know, podcasts about the news or whatever. and Or as you say, Catholic podcasts are, are very good, some of them. I love Restoration Radio, I really do. Um, however, it's hard to listen to when you're ri- driving. You know, two or three hours it will fall, make you, you know, it's too much maybe. So sometimes we really need that, that help, that kind of like a moralizing company. And well, the bad thing about this is that I will never listen to the Catholic Wire podcast because a lot of the times it's going to be me talking, but (laughs) other people will enjoy it, perhaps, I don't know, (laughs) or it will be a good penance. (laughs) Now, Isabel, I I have to ask you something, and I I don't want to put you in the spot. I can cut this later on, maybe. Maybe I won't. But uh, (laughs) So the first time I ever was in a podcast, properly speaking, was when Kevin Davis asked me to to have an interview with him. And I was right here where I'm sitting right now. And I was so nervous. Like the air was not coming into my lungs. You know, I was trying to talk and I was like, (gasps) trying to talk and it just wouldn't stay there. Now I'm more comfortable, especially when I'm the host, you know, I'm pretty comfortable. But I I gotta ask you, are you pretty nervous right now or not, not too much? Not as much as I thought I was going to be. Like yesterday, I knew today I was going to be recording with you, so I was so nervous. I had gone up to the chapel, and I was saying my rosary, and I was just thinking, oh, no, I bet he's expecting so much from me. And then Anthony had texted me and said, oh, Father thinks you're going to do really great. 
And I was like, oh no, <laughs> now there's that <laughs> extra layer of pressure because what if I don't do great? Um, but this morning I just, I started work. I kind of pushed it away. Like I did not think about it at all today. And I, this feels completely normal, like sitting down and talking to you now. I totally thought like yesterday I was far more nervous than I needed to be. But sitting mm-hmm. down at my dining room table, setting it up, I was like, oh, this isn't bad. It was like, mm-hmm. It's just it's just calling father. So, Well, what people don't know is that once we hang up the call, I'll be banging my fist on the table <laughs> saying, why did you not memorize everything as I said so? Yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, this is awesome. I really enjoy it too. Uh, so, you know, going a little bit more into the topics that we want to cover, uh, there is one thing that I fear a lot in these shows. And unfortunately, some of our first shows might have a little bit of that. And it's kind of like, a, you know, some people might feel it's a, bit, uh, a negative approach. Uh, well, here's the deal. I mean, there is so many stuff going on right now in the world that we have to approach some of the stuff that is negative. We have to, we want to have a a positive approach. Uh, At least I want to have as much of a positive approach as we can. Uh, Meaning I want to show the light rather than show the darkness to people. But it's necessary to know that the errors that are going on right now in the world, you know, especially women, uh, girls especially are bombarded right now. Well, everybody. Girls are, are bombarded right now with, so much false propaganda, so much false ideas, uh, so many false ideas, uh, you know, and one thing that is going to come up, and I fear, I dread that, uh, because I, I don't know how many listeners we will drop when that happens, but I, I hope not, because it's really something reasonable. It's uh, the topic of feminism, and uh, I'll, I'll, I don't know, uh, I can already see some people like, <gasps> Going, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and and it's not we're going we're not going to be talking about that like all the time, but definitely it's a, a worldview that we need to take the proper approach to. You know what I mean? Of course, because I don't think a lot of I don't think people understand that feminism is attacking femininity. It's exactly. not empowering it at all. It's asking us to be more like men, which we don't want to be. So I think, like you said, there is a, we're, I'm looking at our notes right now and (laughs) I'm reading Mm -hmm. the line that you wrote, men, women are not supposed to be men. And that feminism is asking us to become men and feminism is disguised though as empowering us when it's, it's not. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, and it's saying that everything that is sacred about a woman is no longer sacred about a woman. That's so true. That is so true. And here's the thing, like for me, uh, what boggles my mind, and I can't understand why there are in like crowds of women out there crying out about this. It's so obvious that this movement of feminism, the one at least that we're seeing right now, it's pushing for women to be like men. And that is, please forgive me, you know, if, if you listen to this and you get indignant, Give us a call. Send us uh, your comments. We will put them on the air. I promise we will put them on the air even if they're contrary. We will because that will make the show so much fun and then we will get a lot more ratings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. So No, no, no. It's still, uh, but um, here's the thing. It's so pathetic. It's so pathetic, you know, because it's like imagine college or high school and you have this student that is the cool student. And then the other student is trying to be like him in everything, mimicking everything that he does. What do you say? You say, that guy is so pathetic, right? Right? Right, of course. That's okay. exactly. I was wondering if you Sorry, were Sorry, I was. No, but so, that's exactly true. Yeah, and, and so it's like this supposed movement of feminism, it's actually quite, as you were saying, is the contrary. It's like it's saying, okay, women are not good enough as women, so they should try to be more like men. No, that's not the case. It's like men have their own dignity. Women have their own dignity. They're supposed to be different and women are not supposed, they don't need anything else. They're, they're perfect as they are and they have so much to offer as they are, as men do. You know, it's like, this is, we're looking at two different topics. None of them, we don't have to say that one of them is less than the other, but we simply have to say they're different. 
And so the whole idea of feminism, of trying to make women approach men, and it's happening the other way around too, you know, they're also attacking mm-hmm. masculinity and they're trying to make men be more like women, which is crazy. So right. it's like, we're, let's say it like this. If there is any feminist right now listening to our show, uh, I'm not criticizing you. I'm not condemning you. Uh, I'll do that outside of the show when, when we meet in church. <laughs> but, <laughs> just kidding. But what, what we're going to try to do is approach the right way, the right way to find the dignity of women and the dignity that God gave to women and the proper place and the proper, uh, I'll say like that, beauty and power that women have because they do in, in their proper place that God gave them. You know, when you think about it, and we've mentioned this before, who is the greatest creature on all of creation that is a pure creature? It's a woman. It's our blessed mother. Right, exactly. Now, that and, doesn't... Sorry, go ahead. No, Father, you go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I have to finish it up because otherwise I'll get censored pretty quickly. <laughs> that doesn't mean that women are supposed to be head. And, and, but being the head doesn't mean being more. And that's something that uh, we will cover in the future. You know, when, when you have, for example, when you say the, the man is, let's say that for future episodes, because I don't want to lose all of my audience in the first one. But <laughs> we will cover those topics. You know, the point is we want to give women the dignity and the power that they're supposed to have in their femininity, as you said. it. That was a very good way you put it, Isabel. No, but it's, <laughs> it's so sad. I see so many of my friends, even friends I went to like that were I was in school with falling for this falling for the idea of men need, women needing to be superior to men that's what they're trying to gain superiority which we don't need first of all but second of all it's just it's just so ridiculous that there are so many women smart women that fall for it so yeah that's enough on that topic. It's making me so sad to think about just how it's, it's feminism just tries to strip everything that a woman is and take away all the beauty of it. And when it's you see just so unfair, yeah. When you see, so, if anyone is complaining right now, remember I will be demoted as a as a host of this show, and Isabel will be the host of the show, so she yeah, will exactly. be empowered. So I will be voicing <laughs> very similar opinions. <laughs> uh, I kind of understand them. And I don't condemn them because I was there too. I want, not that I was not that I was a feminist, but the thing is, we have been so brainwashed, you know. Especially if you went to public school. But if you watch movies, if you look at TV, if you listen to music, uh, the fact is that there is propaganda out there, and it's it's aiming to bring ideas into your mind. And and I am not saying this because I am a priest and and I want to, you know give you my point of view i'm saying this because i was there you know i and this is kind of why maybe i'm doing this because i'm not like your typical priest that lived all his life you know wishing to go to the seminary i'm a guy that was right there in the world that was totally brainwashed by the world and when i joined the seminary and i started learning the truth it 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 was shocking to see how different things were like honestly I might have been a feminist before I was in the seminary. I met, you know, I was against many other things that I thought were right. Uh, give you an, one example, just one really clear example. When I was out in the world, I was convinced that there had to be a separation of the church and state and that the church had nothing to do with the state. And I'm sure many people feel the same right now. But I had that because the school had been drilling that into my mind for 20-something years. Uh, the same, you know, feminism was... It wasn't a foreign concept to me. Like I was actually kind of uh, agreeing with many things because I had been receiving that propaganda. So what I ask you, listeners, is uh, listen to the show and and look at the see hear the arguments that we have to give and see if they're reasonable. And if you find them reasonable, you know, then well accept them. But if you find something that you go like, well, that's wrong, as I said, send us a message, send us a comment, we will put it here. But just listen to it, listen to it and, and actually analyze things with your own reason rather than just by what you're listening or seeing from the TV and whatever. I think, I think that's very important. And I, 
I just want to say one one more thing, just to switch topics real quick. It's uh, a lot. Not not all in this show is going to be about religion, morals, and all that kind of stuff. As I said, I, I whenever you hear me in the on the show, quite probably we will be discussing some of those topics. But uh, Isabel is going to have freedom to put other topics out there that I'm sure are going to be a lot more, uh, a lot a lot less controversial. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> like the COVID vaccine and stuff. Oh yeah, like that. you know exactly the vaccine, <laughs> Biden, all that sort of thing. So that was the the probably the negative aspect that we might cover at some point. Now the positive side, the positive side. Uh, when we, you know, when, when this show is being aimed at at teenage girls, or you know, girls that are teenage girls, and also you know, girls around their twenties, thirties. At this age, and I've mentioned this before, Isabel has probably heard it a bunch of times. At this age, you are building yourself. Whether you're a woman or a man, you are building yourself. And everything that you do uh, has a lot of consequences in your future. But here's the thing. like They say that whatever you do up until your 30s, you can change. But when you, the way you are at your 30s, that's how you will be for the rest of your life. I hope that's not the case for my sake, but, uh, but you know, they say that's true. And so you kind of have to build yourself, think of yourself as a house. You know, you have to decorate the house, you have to build up the walls, you have to build up the foundations. And so in this show, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not going to boss you around. Again, that's going to happen when you're in church, you know, somewhere nearby me. So stay away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But um, but we are going to give you the tools. We're going to give you the tools and the principles to work on yourself. Uh, what we're talking about specifically is we're going to speak about virtues, the beautiful things that you can put in your soul, in your character, in your temper to to build you up and make you a better woman or the woman that God wants you to be. You know what I mean? Right. Of course. That. So, what are some of those virtues? Um, some of the virtues that women, you know, which one, Isabel? Don't cheat. Don't look at the notes. But if you were, if you were to guess what virtue women should have, which one is the first one you think of? Oh, most definitely modesty, and not just in dress, but like, I guess, being humble and modest in our actions and who we are. I would probably say modesty is one of the most important ones. I have to get sound effects and I'll put like a sound effect of a crowd cheering. So they would be like <laughs> cheering out right now. I de I'm definitely doing that. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, here's, here's something interesting though. Uh, I think that is the most obvious one. The one that, you know, shines more. Uh, when I think about scripture, you know, what the Bible tells us, the first virtue that they praise uh, a woman for is strength. And that is something that I found very remarkable as I was preparing for this show, that the first virtue that the Bible, uh, you know, praises on a woman, this is in the book of, in the book of wisdom is strength. Who will find the strong woman? And that's kind of funny. I say, because that's, you would think of men, right? When it comes to that virtue. Right. And it's like, that's the first virtue that the Bible asks in a woman. And that's, again, we're going to the right way of looking at, no, I'm not going to say feminism, I'll say femininity. That the first thing that they ask of you, the first virtue that actually we might speak about, is strength to have fortitude. And, you know, I, I have to say that there is a lot of truth in that. Uh, men, it's, it's true, everybody knows, most people know, not everybody, <laughs> that men are stronger physically than women. Some men, I, 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 know, I know for sure some women that would probably beat me in an arm wrestle. <laughs> but then it's me, you know, that we're talking about here. But, uh, but I, I, have seen, I have seen some women that have an amazing amount of strength morally in their soul. And they take burdens that I, I honestly, I, I can say this from my own life experience. Well, I'll I'll say it and then I'll correct myself. I was going to say that I have seen women that have taken burdens that I would never see any men taken. 
Uh, but then I thought of the bishop. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, no. <laughs> there, yeah, other than Bishop Pimarunas. Yeah, let's no. exclude bishops right now. Yeah. Uh, but I, at least I have seen women that have taken some amazing amount of burden, of, of difficulties, of problems, and you see them just toiling and working and keeping going and persevering amazingly. I, I know one particular person that I can think of right now, and I, I can't say much about her because she might listen to this, <laughs> but she has gone through so many things. When she was telling me I was out of my mind, I was like, and, and she was totally fine, totally normal, just uh, she, she still doing the right thing, I, I should say. And it's just you find that in women. And, you know, that's the first virtue that women have that the Bible says is fortitude. And you see it in our Blessed Mother again, you know, here it is. You know, our Lord is being crucified. All the other strong men left, and the only people that remained were women and and St. John, because yeah. he was next to our Blessed Mother. So that's amazing, isn't it? That that's the yeah, first that's virtue. Incredible. And it's also, like, the fact that women... Well, you think about your mother, like you think about your mother first, like most of the time when I think about a woman, I think about my mother and how strong she is and just knowing what it took for her to get to her level of faith and be the wife and mother that she is today. And almost any other mother that I look at, I'm like, oh my goodness, I could, the fact that you're, the fact that women can be so gentle and have they just radiate comfort, but also these pillars of strength. Uh -huh. It's incredible that they are who they are. Yes. And can do that. That can put these two things that seem so opposite, gentleness and strength, that seem that so far away from each other that women can possess these things at the same time. Mm -hmm. That is that is a very interesting. You made two very interesting uh, points, uh, and the first one, before I forget, I have to say is the what you said about modesty, and I, I love that because I that's what I have been thinking. You know, I was I was thinking to myself, we need to change that concept of modesty as how long is my skirt, you know? Right, <laughs> that, right. That's not the only thing about it. There's actually much more to it, as you were saying, like in, interiorly in the way you act, in the way you talk. Modesty is actually not only a virtue for women, it's also for men. And sometimes yes. you see men also failing in modesty in the way they come across to people, you know, in the way they sit down. So, yeah, that's that's something that definitely has to be, uh, hopefully, I'm hoping for that episode on modesty. Uh, that would be interesting. I'm sure we will receive a lot of calls after that one. Yes, probably. Um, <laughs> uh, modesty has a lot more to it. But the other point that you made... And, and that's super interesting, I think, is the fact that women can have two very opposite virtues at the same time and not conflicting at all. They have some abilities, really, that, women, that men do not have. You know what I mean? Right. Like for men, it's if you're strong, it's kind of hard to show humility uh, yes. sometimes or, or vice versa. It requires a lot of perfection to do so. Women can have all these different contrasts, and it's like, how? Where did, did that come from? You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I completely understand. Like I've seen some people, for example, some of the some of the women that I've seen that seem more cheerful and more happy are the ones that are suffering the worst things in the world. Yeah. You know, like you'll see some someone that is always smiling and being cheerful, and then you find out, oh, she had cancer. It's like, what? You know, how? Like you would have never known. She doesn't let that yeah. stop her from being the happy person that she is. Yeah. And you see that, especially in moms, you know, how many times one sees one mother and she has the smile on her face. Women have many secrets in their heart. And, yes. and it's true. Women have so many secrets in their heart and you never find them out. And, and that's part of their fortitude. That's part of the strength of the virtue that they have, that they can just uh, go with so much and go through so much and keep going. I, I don't know. There are so many virtues. Uh, you know, diligence is one of them. You know, I, another thing that you would think would be more about men, but it's actually a virtue that women 
ought to have. Yeah. Diligence means to be, you know, to work, to to go and do your duty, to go and and be uh, successful in a certain way. And you know, one one that I want to talk about, or at least mention really quickly here, is creativity. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see. I saw that on the list, and I was a little not confused, but curious at what you meant by that. By creativity being a virtue a woman should possess. Yeah. And, you know, here, um, I'm sure it's not really a virtue in, in the fact of, you know, it's probably not listed under St. Thomas. Right. <laughs> but I, I, I'll put it here. There's another name for it, I'm sure. But I put it here because women have also uh, quite a, a, a sense of beauty. You know what I mean? Yes. Women are prone to beauty. And, 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 and that's something they should develop. You know, you don't want to have a girl out there or a woman out there who doesn't develop that sense of, of making beautiful things and doing beautiful things. You know, that's why you go, that's why you see so many girls going to makeup and fashion and, you know, decoration and all that stuff. Because you have a, a, an inner sense of art and there is so much that can be do with, done with art. That girl that I was talking about, the one that sent me the videos, she makes some amazing drawings. Amazing drawings. I think she's 15, 15 or something. Right. And, and it's like, she's an amazing artist. And, and so women have that, that sense of creation. You know, it's creation is in their nature. You know, your mothers, you know, it's like, it's there. It's constantly going. And so I think that's something, you know, it's, it's sad when you see a girl just sitting down or, you know, looking at her Facebook or Instagram or, you know, doing videos for whatever it is that they're doing right now. It's just like, oh, come on. I mean, build something, you know, you can do so much. Right. Not, yeah, no, that makes a lot more sense than what I was thinking. I had no idea what you were talking about when you put creativity on the list. And I was like, I don't know what he means by that. But no, what you're saying makes complete sense. Even So girls that become mothers and wives, it's kind of expected of us and rightfully so that we'll become we'll be making homes we'll be making our homes beautiful because no one wants to live in a boring house no one wants to live in a house with no pictures on the wall and no flowers on the table and no no nothing that's not what anyone wants to live with but you're right women do have a knack for being able to find the beauty in things and being able to put things together in such a way that looks beautiful and it takes practice. I'm sh it, it takes practice and it doesn't come easily for everyone I know, but yeah, we need to, we need to foster those talents that God has given us and not just keep them to ourselves. We need to share them with others and, show them to others and make others happy with them or bring joy to others with them that like, making people happy with them. Isn't, I don't think the right phrase. I have to put you in this spot here again. Oh no. Because the, <laughs> the, is, is there any art in particular that you are? Oh, I, I know the answer. Is there any art in particular that you are prone, you know, leaning to? I'm not sure. I don't, I mean, like me myself. Yes, I, I know. I know the answer. Actually, when I was asking the question, I remember that I know the answer. But I, I want to see what you say. I mean, I'm not sure it can really be considered like an art, but writing and singing are two of the things. Those two things I am most drawn to when it comes to creativity. I guess singing sure. for sure. That's what I yes. thought of. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty sure singing is what he's thinking. Yes. But yeah. And because that was something that we did every day. I was talking to Colleen the other day and just telling her how much I miss singing with the girls that I lived with in Omaha. I mm. was telling her singing. It was my favorite thing to do with everyone singing and singing for mass, singing just to have fun. Those, like, those were the times that we were laughing the hardest, probably 
is if one of us messed up, it, we were laughing and just having the best of times. So, I, yeah, I'd probably say singing. Yeah. I actually remember that because you would be singing in the classroom and I would be working in oh, directory. No. <laughs> and yes, I, I remember that vividly. Like I would be working in directory and then I'd be typing stuff in the computer. No one's around. And I just hear in the classroom like this beautiful singing, you know, like religious music. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, that sounds really good. And then I just hear. <laughs> okay. We couldn't help ourselves. <laughs> no, and we, I, there were two girls that I spent my most of my time in Omaha with that we were singing all the time to the point that towards the end of one of our school years, the other girls were asking us to stop. They were like, you mm-hmm. need to stop singing, please. And we're like, but it's so much fun. And they're like, no, and it sounds good, but you need to stop. You're singing all the time. And, but yeah, you're right. I'm sure that all the seminarians have heard the high school girls singing in the classroom and then just an eruption of laughter because someone made a face or sang it wrong or something. So. Yeah. I, I, I am kind of embarrassed that you all know that and heard so many songs of us and so many times that we were messing around in there. Well, if it makes you feel any better, we didn't know who it was until you oh. said it on the radio. So. Oh, great. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> now, oh, um, will just come after me, that's all. Just to clarify, just to clarify, uh, the seminarians, the seminary in, in Omaha, uh, was uh, at one point it was at the same uh, in the same property that the school was. It was enclosed, but it was in the same property, and so the seminarians sometimes would be required to 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 do some work in the school. That was actually something that that worked out to to gain some experience as well. All obviously with the proper separations and restrictions. Uh, now at this point, the seminary has been moved out of the property. There are still some seminarians that help out in 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 the high school, whether it is teaching or or helping out, especially with the high school boys. But it's a good experience to gain. But you know, just just to let you know what we mean, because some people might not be familiar with the with the how set things up. were set up in in Omaha. Yeah. Now, uh, that's that's you know something that I really want to foster on this podcast, or or I should say, in the website. It's actually art, as we were saying. Uh, when I was uh, 20-something years old, I had a whole studio in my room. I had a, not a real, I'm exaggerating perhaps. I had a digital recording uh, device. I had a drum kit. I had a, a keyboard. I had a microphone, a guitar. That's about it, I think. And I did my own songs. I, I did, uh, I think I recorded probably five, five songs. Uh, like I did everything. You know, I took the... I had the drums, I had the guitar, I had the voices, and I did like actual really, I'm not trying to, you know. Toot my own horn. Yes, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but but I mean, it, it was okay, people liked it, and I ended up erasing all those when I went to the monastery, but I think it's something really cool, you know, and I think young, I mean, I see young people today investing $500 in an Xbox. And I'm like, man, I mean, you could do so much with your life. You, you could know, do so much more with $500. Yes, yes. I mean, you know, buy a cool microphone, buy a, a, a guitar. There's so much technology right now. You can actually make a song with the computer and then sing it and record it and put it out there. And that's what I want to foster with this network. You know, I'm going, okay, Isabel, this is really exciting. Okay, I wasn't going to say anything, but you got it. <laughs> um, we're going to have contests in the network. So, for example, we're going to have a contest on the nativity scenes and videos of the nativity scenes. So you have to build a nativity scene, make a video of it, and the best one is going to get a prize, okay? Uh, we're going to have contests, for example, of folk music. You make your own recording, and it has to be like a cool recording, and then we'll make an album of all that music that people send, which might be like two people. But, um, and then the, the best recording is going to get a prize, too. Uh, obviously, yeah, it's so cool. That's a really uh, good idea. I think it's going to be really cool. I mean, I'm going to go into the contest. Uh, no, just kidding. I can't because I guess I'm the... <laughs> I was going to say, are you allowed to enter it? <laughs> yeah, no, I, that would be kind of illegal. Um, <laughs> but no, that that's one. Uh, I want to make one of art, of drawing, painting, uh, 
I want to make one. This is going to be really cool, but this is for the mother's show. Uh, I want to make one of the best cooking video, like cooking tutorials. And this is going to be for men and women because men are really good cooks too. And so the best one is going to win also cash. And okay, I'm a priest. I don't care about cash. I care about bringing souls to God. But as I said, sometimes we need to create some uh, social, you know, we need to create a social environment. We need to make Catholics feel like they're at home, like there's a community. And for that, this works. So uh, I'm really excited about that part of the project, actually. I am, too. That sounds like a really good idea. I think that it will help bring a healthy sense of competition to the community and also, yeah, just another way for us co- to connect with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, that's a really cool idea. I'm glad I, that you thought of that. I was going to tell you, we have we have the first two shirts of the Catholic Wire on the process to be done right now. But that's not the price. No that would be way. Like, yeah, yeah, that, that would be like a really lame price. So, no, it's going to be something better. And so, yeah, uh, girls, women, uh, men, young men, men old, everybody, uh, get ready for those kind of things. I guess we're almost about to wrap it up, Isabel. I don't know if there's anything else you want to come in before I go into the last part of what I wanted to say. Uh, no, I don't think that. I think we've covered pretty much everything I've wanted to talk about. Okay. You better think about more stuff to say because you have like a bunch of hours to fill. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. I don't think that will be a problem for you, though. But I don't see. think so either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the last thing I want to say is this. Uh, this show is going to have a lot of uh, participation from our listeners. So we want you all to send us voice recordings with your questions, voice recordings with your comments. Even more, as I said, I repeat, even more if they are adverse, if you're against it, if you want to fight it, I don't, better, send it, please send it, because as I said, that will give us more ratings and it will be so much fun (laughs) to destroy your arguments online. (laughs) I'm just kidding, no. But yes, send us everything you got, you know, comments and, and especially there's something in particular that I'm interested in. If you have real stories of your life or someone else's in your in your family that are edifying, that are inspiring, you know, uh, something that you go like, wow, this, this thing that happened is really, really cool. Uh, send it over so we can add them here in the year. I mean, I think that is really cool to hear stories from other people that that are encouraging. I will say uh, one one in particular that I learned recently. It's uh, I was in a, one of my missions, and I was told about this woman. She lived, uh, I think, in Alabama. Uh, her name was uh, Jamie, I think, Janie. And they, they wrote a book about her. her. I think it was a friend of her son that wrote the book. And she must have lived maybe 50 years ago, 60 years ago. She passed away like in the 70s or 80s. This woman got married. She wasn't Catholic. She got married to a Catholic guy. And they got married and and they had a baby. Two years after her marriage, she got the polio. This is in the 1950s. Are you familiar with the polio at all, Isabel, or no? Yes, yeah. Did you ever hear about the iron lungs? Yes, the iron lungs and all that sort of thing. So she got the polio two years after her marriage. She couldn't move anything in her body but her left arm. She got put in the air lung, and that was her life from then on. She was 20-something when it happened. And she would not be able to see her husband or to touch him, you know, like not even touch his face or anything because she, had, she was on this huge machine. And she had to live with that noise. And, and, and that was her life, just being stuck in a room and and when you read about what happened to her, you know, like she, here's the thing. Okay, I'll, I'll try to summarize the story. After that, uh, a few years after, she was moved. They were in a big hall where they could see the light. Then she was moved to the basement of the hospital because they didn't have any more room. And so she lived in a basement of the hospital where she could see the pipes above her and nothing else. And she lived there for a number of, I think, like two or three years more. And then her husband got tuberculosis. Is that how you say it in English? Tuberculosis, yeah. Yeah. So he had to go to the hospital and he couldn't see her anymore. 
the story when I when when I was reading it, it was like what <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's so sad. <laughs> it seems so sad, right? The husband uh, uh, w- went to the hospital. She went to the hospital, and the amazing thing is the husband was by her side all the time. He kept working. He kept he kept taking care of the baby. He was visiting her often, and then he got sick. He couldn't do it anymore. Uh, it gets better after a while. It turns out they they that was at the moment where they stopped using the iron lungs and they found like new technologies. So she was able to go home. Her husband recovered and he, they were both able to go home. And so it gets a lot better from then on the story. And at home, she still couldn't move, but she could only move her left hand. So she would raise her children just like that from bed. She would say like, okay, you know, so-and-so he he behaved badly, you know, give him a spanking. And so I so go, go and do this and go and cook for your dad and whatever. She would be taking care of all the house, sitting down from her bed. And then one of her friends, the one that wrote the book, he convinced her to write her life story. So she had a typewriter and with her left hand and a pencil, because that's all she could use, with the pencil she would type, you know, letter by letter. And she started typing. Half of the book is her, her doing. And when you, when you hear those things, it's like, Wow. That's she incredible. En- it's really cool. She ended up, I was reading the book. I'm a priest, okay? I was reading this book and I was just like, whoa, amazed. <laughs> uh, she ended up converting to Catholicism, actually. I skipped that part. But when, when her husband was in the hospital from tuberculosis and when she was at the other hospital, the only way they could knew about each other was because there was this priest, a friend of the husband, who would visit one and then go visit the other. And so he would be like, you know, relaying messages to one another. And thanks to this priest, she started thinking about the Catholic faith and she converted to Catholicism. While in the hospital, her baptism, she was taken with the iron lung into the church and she was baptized in the iron lung by this priest. And so she became Catholic. And she says, she says, after that moment, like everything in my life made sense. And it's just, here's the thing that, that really moves you about the book, is that there is this person that everyone would say she lost her life. And it's like, her life is so incredibly full. You know, she, she has such a strong message to give. She gives such, so much power, you know, to, to look at her resignation and how faith helped her. And it's like, what a beautiful life. You know, you read it, and, and at the end of the book, you go like, what a beautiful life this woman had. You know, it's just, it's really cool. I think it's really cool. And, and we're hoping to reprint the book. I have it, so I, we might reprint it and put it in the Catholic Wire in case anyone wants to read it. That'd be incredible. It sounds like such a good book. I've never like heard anything about that story ever. It's, it's not known because, as I said, it's never been published. It was just published, like, for the family, really. Oh, wow. So it's just like a, I... I'm trying to contact the family. I'm not sure if I'll be able to, but uh, I don't think there's even a copyright or anything because it was just a couple of copies for, for like friends and stuff. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's uh, I guess we'll wrap it up for today's show. Uh, Isabel, I can, I can't, I can't thank you enough for jumping into the project and we're all very, very excited to have you on board. Uh, you're actually one of the first ones that jump on board, but you were one of the last ones to do the podcast because of my fault. Oh, no. I mean, schedules never match up quite as we'd like them. But thank you so much for asking me to be on this podcast. It's going to be a good outlet, I think, for everybody involved. I'm so excited to be a part of it. I'm really looking forward for the next shows. And uh, we'll talk about more about our plans in the future. But uh, for now, that will be all. Please, those of you listening, uh, this will be some of the first shows released. So make sure you start sending your questions. If you know Isabel and you have her phone number, you can send it to her. Uh, We won't put our phone numbers in the air, at least not hers. I might put mine. You can send them to me as well, and I can send them voice messages to her. And you can also reach her through the contact page. If you go to the Catholic Wire and you go to the the section of the young woman, there is a contact uh, form in there, and you can reach Isabel through that contact form. And you can always uh, give us a message, but especially send us voice messages, send us uh, voice uh, questions, voice comments, whatever, so we can put you also on the air. So, Isabel, thank you once again for joining us. Thank you, Father. 
it was and great to be here. Thank you. And uh, thank you, everybody, to uh, for sticking out with us all these 60 minutes. You have been listening to The Young Woman, hosted just for this first time by Father Cepeda. The next time, Isabel is going to take the burden for the greater glory of God. This is uh, your servant, Father Cepeda, and you're listening to The Catholic Wire. God bless you. Thank you for listening to The Catholic Wire. If you have found the show helpful, please say a prayer for all our collaborators. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels and share with your friends. For questions and comments, you may contact us at thecatholicwire.org.